Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Pensado's Place. He's Dave Pensado. I'm Herb Trollick. In a minute, you'll meet our guest. He's got records that have sold over several hundred million views on YouTube. But first, we got some stuff for you. The Pensado Pro Audio Party takes place Saturday, June 30th. It's at SummerNAM, Nashville, Tennessee. 1 p.m., a conversation with audio giant John McBride, Dave and I. We'll talk about studio and live audio, where the jobs are, his amazing complex, and you can ask questions of him or all of us all together. Then right around 2, the three of us are heading down the hall to the Pro Audio Lounge for a meet and greet and free gear for you. Our good friends at Warm Audio, Sonarworks, Avid, Isotope, and a new company called Audio Sorcery, they've all stepped up big on your behalf, for example. The Warm Audio Grand Prize alone is worth over 5K, and you know how good their stuff is. Sonarworks Cutting Edge, new product, the Reference 4.1, that'll be available. That software allows you to remove coloration from headphones and speakers, allows you to measure and calibrate your room. Isotope, always dependable, incredible stuff. Vocal Synth 2, Ozone, Neutron, their product. And Audio Sorcery has a special new beta product. Um, they are amazing in the world of audio separation. Our boy Rick Silva is over there. You're going to really like that stuff. And we have more than that. So if that's not enough, we'll also get you into Summer NAM for free. Just go to bit.ly forward slash Pensado Summer. You see it right here. Enter the code Pensado. That's very important. Enter a little bit of information, which allows you to get past security, and you are golden. To recap, the Pensado Pro Audio Party, 1 p.m. Saturday, June 30th, Hall C, booth 453 with John McBride. Gear giveaway and meet and greet in the Pro Audio Lounge afterwards, also in Hall C, right at 2 p.m., and tons and tons of gear. Then Dave and I and the team get back on the road three weeks later. We'll be in Chicago July 21st. Uh, we're the keynote speakers for ImstaFest of Chicago. That takes place at the SAE campus downtown. We'll be on at 12 noon. As usual, we'll bring fun and some goodies and some people, and we'll have a ball. It's free as well. You can register at imsta.org to get in. So those two days, June 30th in Nashville, July 21st in Chicago, we will see you there. Um, and now, quick aside before we get to the meet. Uh, if you watch our show, you know the story of David Platalero. Um, he's our buddy who had a severe spinal accident, was never supposed to walk again. He was a Blackbird student. He has fought back to walk. He's done our award show. He's appeared on American Idol. I think it was 40 million some odd views. He's been on Ellen. And now, believe this or not, he is right in the midst of a 500-mile bike ride. Um, he now goes by his artist name, David Francisco, and we want to give you a quick update. Take a look at this. Dave, Herb, what's up? It's David Francisco here from the road. Uh, two years ago, I was paralyzed, and you guys were the first ones to come and just say, hey, Dave, you're going to be all right. We're with you. And so many other people have joined along the, the thing that you started in supporting me. So now I'm on this 500-mile bike race giving back to all those people and uh, just wanted to say thanks from the road. We're two days into this thing. It's super fun. And uh, you can follow us at dfrideforhope.com. And uh, just, again, wanted to say thanks for all your support. Love you guys. Peace. Congrats to John Platalero and his wife, Mitzi, for amazing parenting. And, of course, David Francisco and his wife, Christy, uh, who we met at our award show for your warrior spirit and really showing us how it's done. And for all the audio people who have stepped up on his behalf, Music Cares, Westlake Pro, we raised some money for him. Uh, uh, the, it really showed what the community can do. Congratulations on your ride. And now, DP, you've got a uh, brand new ITL, I correct? Do, I do, Herb. Um, what is it? Um, recently, I've been running into some situations where my keyboards aren't quite cutting through the mix. I'm going to show you how I solved it. This is a song I'm going to play you by a friend of mine, Isaac Hasselkorn, brilliant up-and-coming producer and artist. Love his vocals. You're not going to hear him today, but you can buy the record or you can go listen to it streamed pretty soon, pretty soon, I hope. A lot of times I run into a situation where I've got keyboards and, and, and there's a lot of percussive elements in the song, and you'll hear when I play you the track. And, and, and I like when my keyboards come in, I like them to be aggressive right at that first downbeat when they come in. It, it just sets the whole tone. Check it out. This is, this is what I got. You want that and it's not there, so I'm going to show you how to get it. 
Now one of the things I like doing is removing a little bit of the middle. Now you can do this with this plug-in by Waves or you can take an MS plug-in and do something similar. One of my favorites is Dr. MS by Matthew Lane. I think I've shown, shown you this once before, but I want to show you how I apply it to, to this particular situation where I want impact. And we're not trying to go for an EQ or for anything other. We're trying to go for some ephemeral feeling, emotion. I want you to feel something when that, when that, when that downbeat hits. And then I threw a little bit of a chorus on it with this Enigma, which is one of my favorites. So let's check it out. One more time without. Okay. Now I want you to focus real tight on the on the uh, on the keyboard sound. Pretty cool. Now that that's a musical version. Um, now let me show you the exaggerate a little bit. Take the drums out so you can really really hear what we're doing. You see what I'm saying? It it just it's just it just creates an image in your mind of a long messed up haired classical guy with with a tux on and tails and white hair and just goes up to the piano and just bangs on it. That's the feeling you want to get there. And, and you can use this on acoustic guitars, you can use this on guitars, I've used it on vocals, anything that you want to have an aggressive element to it and that has a rhythmic component that you want to accent. Let me know what you do with it. Thanks. Diego Farias plays, composes, engineers from Dram Broccoli to Volumes to Jake Paul, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Welcome, man. We Thanks catch you right me. as you took a sip. That's, that's good. <laughs> we try to do, I try to wait till they catch you in a bad spot. Yeah. Oh, How you doing? A great man. Thanks yeah. for having me on the show. Okay. Uh, I've been a big fan. Been following the show since uh, pretty much the beginning. Oh, so cool! It's really You're cool. You're not to be that here. old, man. We, we've been around about 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, what does it feel like to have you know? Because you have a current record that's also blowing up internet, but the Jake Paul record, it's over 200 million views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, um, well, it's always funny because like you know you never really know what's gonna blow up, you yeah. know. And I, all, I put, you know, so much effort into, you know, like volumes and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. um, it's crazy. The first time I ever went platinum as a producer, it just ends up being like you just never the, know. Some, the most random like and situation. That's but pretty much true for every act. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, mean, you, you can yeah. you can believe you got it all you want. I mean, I, this is a, a, a you know the band Earth, Wind, and Fire. Of course, I, I say that, which most people do. Um, um, Maurice White told me once that when CBS Brass came in, they were a big, 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 big group at the time, yeah. came in to listen to their newest album. Yeah. They listened to their whole album. He had a c CD at the time yeah. sitting on the side of what was what he called sort of not, you know, just music for him. Mm -hmm. And um, on that CD, which he never intended to let them hear, was a song called Boogie Wonderland. <laughs> and he was wow. like, that's yeah. not for you. He resisted playing it, this, that, and the other. Then they played it, and they were like, Maurice, and he was, resisted that. And then they came back and said, we want to make it a single. He resisted that, and boom. Yeah, you, you, you never, never know. know. You, you never it's know. It's the beauty of it, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The least that Did you learn expect. anything from that lesson, to trust your instincts, to just go with it sometimes? Um, What's the takeaway? Yeah, I, I pretty much, prob I probably learned to not overthink it and to just let it be, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, and to always expect the unexpected. Because same with broccoli, you know what I mean? That, that, that session, actually, I was there, um, my buddy was at the session, right? And he called me, he's like, yo, come hang out, you know, we're having some fun. Uh, and five minutes before I pull up, he calls me, a buddy, Roger Shahayed. Mm -hmm. He's like, yo, the engineer has to leave. Like, we're about to cancel a session. You think you think you cover cover him and engineer the session? Mm. Yeah, sure. I pull up. I had some, like, Taco Bell, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> You're eating you good. Know, yeah, eating like, I was just eating healthy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, we end up, uh, it wasn't even going to happen, but we had just ended up recording this song in, like, 30, 40, 45 minutes, and uh, it was broccoli. Wow. So Amazing. It was cool, yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. You never know. Did, did you start the song from scratch, like, like, mm. like? I had, was just the recording engineer, but that song it, it was started it had from scratch. It already been written. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, my buddy Roger uh, had started playing the keyboard part, and then and they based the idea like off that. And it, the beat the beat was written in you know, forty five minutes, mm -hmm. thirty those, minutes. Those kind of sessions, particularly um, with Dram, because he's 
such a magnetic personality. Such the a whole, happy guy. The whole, Great guy. It seems like the whole point of the engineer is just to direct the, the vibe of the session. Yeah, I feel, I honestly, I felt that's pretty much all I'd I give some do. techniques. How, what do I, you do? I was just like, you know, telling Yachty, like, yo, you killed it. Like, you snap. Uh -huh. Get, do it. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Keep uh -huh. going. Keep going. Uh -huh. That's pretty much it. And, oh, um, that's cool. It was, uh, there was, um, fun in the air for sure. And I think that's, that's what was captured. And that's what was special about that song. That's yeah. what I noticed, you know what I mean? It seems like in today's world, um, more so than like five or 10 years ago, we were a little more serious. Now we seem to like, like to have, um, I don't, I don't know, I don't know an adjective for it, but just a little lighter things, you know, in terms of dram. I mean, obviously the world's a different place and needs some serious stuff, but, uh, I think the rules. I think the rules about making records have changed. I think the really well. I think For the sure. tools and the independence. You know, the independent space is so big yeah. that people aren't saying that you have to do it this way and you mm -hmm. have to master it that way and you have to. People are. It's a rule breaking, wild, wild west kind of time now, and some yeah. of that includes the ener energy in the studio. You think? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think. Uh, uh, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you're just making art, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I th what I learned from Broccoli was, or, um, you know, you could have a bunch of skilled people in a room, you know what I mean? But I think what makes takes it to the next level is really, like, uh, creating a good vibe in the studio and, mm -hmm. and capturing because you're actually, you're recording a performance, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I th there's some, I have this crazy theory that I will, not too crazy, but, uh, you know what the vibe in the room gets captured mm -hmm. in the recording, so mm -hmm. you can hear it. And I think the vibe while you're recording mm -hmm. is, did is you ever, really important. For sure. Did you ever see the battle between broccoli and cauliflower? It's on tape. <laughs> All the <laughs> no. Yeah, no, man. I mean, it's, it is brutal, man. It, somebody threw some soy sauce on one of them, and it just turned into a whole, whole other thing. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's why we're here, right? You you have a Mexican ancestry, and the music in Latin Central America is just yeah. Dripping with, with vibe and color and, and, and groove. It is, for and, sure. Um, how do you get some of that into your work? I try to get a little Cuban into everything I do, but um, can't always. Well, how do I get like Latin stuff mm -hmm. into the work? I, I just, just feel, just that feel. Just, just feel like uh, for a volume song, it's called Finite, one of our last singles. Mm -hmm. We had this big banging like riff, right? Like mm -hmm. super heavy. Mm -hmm. And right before we finished turning the final mix, I was like, yo, you know what? Let's let's add some bongos to this, you know, see what it bongos does. Bongos in a metal song? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. And so you can hear on the first, on the opening riff, there's this big, huge, heavy riff. And um, we put it? some bongos. No, it was a sample. Uh but uh but um yeah i brought it to life and uh sometimes i just try to like uh incorporate that you know cultural background i, I come from to yeah. the music so you know just have fun with it not not overthink See, it too I, much I, yeah. i'm convinced that there's i'm sorry to cut you out i, I think yeah. that there's a lot of metal that's actually funky Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I'd say people miss long. that all the time. I, I I will be banging stuff in my car, and people pull up and they go, "What? You just don't look like you should be listening to that." And they don't understand <laughs> that the bottom of it, yeah, is it's just groove. it is it is such groove oriented yeah. music. Um, well, you look at Pantera, you know, R.I.P. Mm. Vinnie Paul. Um, you know, I think Pantera just had that groove. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of undeniable. I think all the all the best music has to have groove. You know. But and and even yeah. you go back farther, so man. Yeah. Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor, for sure. Biscuit, like there was just no, things sure. with just incredible pocket, incredible groove. Oh hell yeah! yeah. And I noticed hell that yeah. in some of the stuff that you guys do, that volumes do. There's a so is that part of your heritage coming through? Is that just the taste of the guys? Well, to tell you the truth, Volumes, there's this band called Meshuggah, mm -hmm. and I just mm -hmm. wanted to copy them, pretty much, <laughs> and then Volumes came out, mm. and that's that's all it is. So, like, you know, um, they're, they're really groove-oriented, too, so mm -hmm. I think I got the idea, and, like, I got obsessed with that whole, like, vision and sound uh through them mm, so i mm. that's the that's the main influence that's why it, do that's you guys exact that in your live show just what? just big pocket during your live oh, show 100 percent, yeah. and it's great for like the light show and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. we just started using lights and stuff so yeah it's, it's but, great oh cool are you, doing, you, 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 are you doing a lot of uh singing choruses and in like <laughs> verses i mean yeah yeah on the new i mean actually when we first started it was just the all fact screaming, that you understood right? that question is, <laughs> It's, it's pretty amazing. No, no, no. When we started, because you know, I started the band. You know what I'm talking about. 
I, I started the band when I was a kid, you know, like mm -hmm. 15, 16, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, like, um, the, now I listen back to some of the stuff, and it's like we had such great, cor like, instrumental choruses, but, like, there was just screaming on it. And I'm just like, I'll listen to it back. I'm like, man, we could have wrote the coolest melodies. But uh, that's the beauty about, you know, continuing to do to put out records is that now we could do that. Mm. And so the last record has a lot more singing. Yeah. And, and, I like and the just... last record a lot, by the way. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. So in, yeah. in the volumes hierarchy, mm -hmm. yes. besides playing, what else do you do in there? Is producing, composing, engineering? Composing, producing, mixing, um, uh, pretty much everything. Other, other, I've never mastered a final release, mm -hmm. I'd say, but everything else. Uh, You're pretty busy. You pretty, I'm pretty hands-on yeah. in there tweaking final mixes. You know what I mean? The last record, I only mixed two of the songs, and then my buddy Kyle Black mixed the, re uh, the rest of the record. But mm -hmm. uh, No Sleep, the record before that, I mixed that. And then I did some, some mixing on Via 2. So I'm pretty, like, detailed, and um, I get in there. I cut, I cut my teeth doing it, you know, because mm -hmm. I think tracking all those guitars and, and being so tedious with that and audio editing, like, when I started really doing like the rap stuff, like I was so fast, like just from that, like mm -hmm. from uh, uh, editing audio, mm -hmm. you know. And I get I get nice with it, you know what I mean. I'll do like custom shortcuts on Pro Tools, mm -hmm. go to, you know system preferences, mm -hmm. and keyboards, go to Pro, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Just uh, for audio suite stuff, and um, yeah, it makes workflow faster. So yeah, I was gonna Cut ask my you. So Pro Tools, that's your dog of choice. Yeah, I mean, um, every so, all right. So when we did Broccoli, uh, I saw. The beat being made on on FL Studio, mm -hmm. and so ever since that, day, I was like, wait, I could, because I, I was already like balls deep in a Pro Tools, sure. you know what I mean, the custom shortcuts, all this stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear, but no, uh, so I saw <laughs> FL Studio. I'm like, yo, I can, you know, it seems pretty easy. Like, let me do this. So mm -hmm. I started using it. Well, that was like two and a half years ago. So all my beats I do in FL now, and they, it just bumps harder. Mm -hmm. Like something about it, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do, I'll I'll bypass the limiter on the master for FL Studio. Mm -hmm. I put the and I put the soft clipper on it. Mm. So and there's just something that you know like the built-in sampler and stuff like that. Pro Tools doesn't have that. You have to like edit audio, so it's like mm -hmm. you, it's harder you, to write. Are you using the Mac version? Because the Mac version yeah. just came out. I am. You happy am. with the Mac version? Yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten it yet. It's pretty. And cool, by the man. way, that limiter is money. Oh, on the on FL. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, the stock plugins are great. Yeah. That, I'm trying to think. You know, you have Gross Beat, mm -hmm. um, which is like I think it's um, a lot of this rap sound. All those slow like samples comes from Gross Beat. Um, You're not able to do. No, I mean uh, we use it live volumes for the show. Oh, do you? Um, but uh, I'd like to use it more mm. for sure because I think mm -hmm. Ableton's like a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, FL isn't too good with recording audio and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, there's like latency I can't get rid of. I mean, maybe someone knows how to do it, but I don't know how to record even audio without latency, you know? Mm. And that's it makes you appreciate uh, how good the 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 Pro Tools system and, and soft, how, it makes you appreciate how powerful it is. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can run all this stuff and not have latency and mm -hmm. then like you mm -hmm. have all this headroom. You definitely have way more headroom on 12 mm -hmm. than you do on FL Studio. So, mm -hmm. different, cool. different things for different things. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. Different. They're each DAW is like its own instrument, right? You mm -hmm. know, I mean, a lot of these producers, like, like when you go on Wikipedia, as you say, like for instrument, that it says FL Studio. Mm -hmm. it, it, so it is an instrument. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's and so cool. Yeah. You know, like uh, some of the beats, I'll just. I won't even use a keyboard. I'll just use like the 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 keypad, mm -hmm. you know. And it's almost it limits you, but it's almost like that limitation helps you be more creative, in a way. When you're playing live, yeah, does it inform your producing or composing? Are, are there things that you're picking up from a live audience that you go, oh, you know, when I'm writing a song, I remember this move somebody. Oh, or for, this. for sure. Live, playing shows live shows you what works. Mm -hmm. So when I'm writing for anything, and even even like rap um i've done a bunch of stuff with this with puya mm -hmm. so uh like um for anything i'll just like write something that i think is going to translate good live mm -hmm. and because i think those are the best songs you mm -hmm. know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's probably some people out in the audience right now going yeah Hi, middle rap juan gabriel for our <laughs> spanish-speaking friends right and uh dram um how does he do it? And none of that stuff seems to mix, but it does seem to mix. It seems like the energy from rock that that's kind of 
fading away in rock itself is For now sure. is now manifesting in 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 the hip hop world. Hundred percent. I mean, like like. Um, uh, Metro Boomin is almost a rock star, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, for sure. And, and, and um, guys like Skrillex, Rock, Max oh, yeah. Martin, heavy metal band. It, it seems like a lot of those, a lot of guys that start out in the rock world, mm -hmm. and I are one, um, can carry that energy into the into the music today and, and take it to another level. Uh, do you feel that uh, coming out of your work or is it something you feel? A hundred percent. I think I'm addicted to high energy music. Yeah. And I think that's what I even really like. <laughs> even about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, uh, that's the band, you know, metal, the volume stuff is so intense, you know what I mean? So, and I think that modern day trap and stuff like that, it's like the modern day thing, mm -hmm. newer thing that has that type of like aggressive mm -hmm. energy and it's mm -hmm. just, I'm attracted to it. And um, yeah. you miss it when it's not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we live in the day of, um, I think, I want to see what you think, mm -hmm. of synthesis where there's not walls between things like there was before. You know, this genre is specific over that's here true. and that's over there. Now it's all. It's so intertwined and mm -hmm. mixed that, mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, you gotta, you got to start doing new things because everything's been done, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. I think that's where that stems from. And It's interracial yeah. dating, really. Yeah. That's really what it is. Interracial? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, interracial inter genre. Music. Yeah, exactly. Inter genre. But, but, you, but you see the effects of yeah. this particular genre signature stuck into this, and, and then it comes up with a brand new form. And it so gets so interesting. Mm -hmm. well, and I think it's the only way to stay interesting when For there's sure. so much music out now. For you sure. Know, there, there's, there's lots of pick your platform, pick your playlist, pick your, you know, there's lots yeah. of stuff out there to go through. And now it's all global. Mm -hmm. You can listen to music anywhere in the world now, which yeah. is which is your also phone. a big difference. Yeah, so you have to you have to figure out how to stand out in your world. How big is the internet in in terms of what you do from a marketing standpoint, branding standpoint, distribution? Oh, uh, well, the internet's like the key kind of to everything because it's like, um, you know, back in the day you needed a I label. You're about to pull the internet out of your pocket. Oh yeah, right. You reach back <laughs> in there like, uh, look at the That's internet. That's how crazy. It's <laughs> no, I mean. Uh, uh, back in the day, you had labels, right? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That was kind of like the only way to really blow up. But now you can kind of, it's like a formula, you know what I mean? Like some of these artists, they go viral first and then they start making music. Sure. So it's almost like, well, because they have so many eyes on them, like if you create something good, a lot of people will know about it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a crucial role. The internet plays a big part. It's also like, it's a way for you to showcase your personality and fan, and, and, to your fans, you know what I mean. It's also a way to connect. Like, you can interact with 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 people, and um, in, it's interesting. I, I love it. In, cool. You have something currently out that's that's beginning to blow up on the internet, right? What what oh, record what? is out? Well, uh, what like uh, on on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, the Jake Paul one. Yeah, is that the one you're referring to? For what? I th you admit we before we started taping, you said there was something that was blowing up. Now, is it the Jake Paul record? That I continues think, to blow. Oh yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. It just went platinum like two weeks ago, mm, mm. and I would have never, ever, you know what I mean, uh, thought that would happen. But yeah, um, and yeah, it just uh, it's got like over two hundred million plays on YouTube, and um, yeah, shout out Jake Paul. He's a good guy, you know. Mm. There's there there. He's been the center of a lot of controversy and mm -hmm, stuff, but mm -hmm. personally, he's a great kid and mm -hmm. he works really oh, hard. He's the video guy that did the thing in Japan. That was his brother. Oh. His, yeah, he. That's Logan Paul. Logan Paul, yeah. Yeah, I like Logan Paul's work. Wasn't Jake on Top Chef? What? I think Jake was on Top Chef. He might have been. Yeah. He's doing a bunch of stuff. He's like fighting some guys like a boxing match. Oh, and, he's busy. But yeah, the kid, yeah. he works really hard. So I, I, I have to give it to him. So you, the internet has been one vehicle, and then you've also traditionally won stuff. You won Latin Grammys. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, my dad has been, uh, was Juan Gabriel's producer for like, you know, the last 25 years, mm -hmm. rest in peace. And um, you know what I mean? Uh, once volume started taking off, I started doing other mm -hmm. other jobs and stuff like that, production jobs and um, a lot of like, you know, the, the broccoli stuff sure. or, or just, just trap music, you know what I mean, making them. Um, so he was working on the record, right? And he came to me and he said, he's like, listen, I, like, I know you're going out to clubs and stuff and I've heard you're, you're your pop and your rap stuff, like I need that sound for this mm -hmm. for this album. Mm -hmm. So I got a track with Jay Balvin, um, and I needed to do the what you the do? reggaeton. Yeah, yeah, do your stuff on it. You know, make it this got it's got a bump in a club. Mm -hmm. Like I need you to mm -hmm. to do it. So so I did a, a version 
of it, I had my buddy Roger, who actually played keyboards on, on Broccoli. Mm -hmm. I called him over, I'm like, yo, help me out, you know, lay down some keys on this stuff, you know? Did the drums, bass, and stuff. And uh, we sent it over to Jay Balvin, and, and he approved it, and, and um, it ended up being the single for the, for the album. And then, so that one went over well, and, and I ended up doing another one with We Seen. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then me and my buddy DJ OK, um, did one with Paulina Rubio. Mm. Oh, so. I did a couple of records with her. Oh, really? Yeah, I did That's the awesome. duet with her and, cool. um, oh gosh, um, Gloria Trevi. Gloria, okay, yeah. cool, hell yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah she had I, her clothes I, on, by the way. So. What? She had her clothes on, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, I wanted to definitely shout out, uh, DJ OK, because, uh, when I did the J Balvin stuff, like, I was new to, like, doing some reggaeton stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, I called, okay, I'm like, yo, what do you think I should be messing with sample-wise? He's like, oh, download these couple packs. Mm -hmm. And I, I ended up using uh, uh, the drum, like, making the drums out of the packs he told me. So, mm. so mm. great guy. For sure, really humble guy. This would be a good time. If you can do it, if you can't, I understand. But yeah. so many of my friends don't understand reggaeton. They don't understand what differentiates it from all the other forms. Can you give them like a 30 second lesson and in, in in uh, what I, constitutes reggaeton? It's the drum beat. Boom. Statu, tatu, statu, tatu. That's all I could. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to tell you. Doom. Statu, tatu, tatu, tatu. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, so much so uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty simple. I mean, um, but yeah, it's, 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 I didn't know after doing these records, I realized how, how big and worldwide the genre is, you know, yeah. like, and, mm -hmm. and... It went down for a little bit and then came back, you know, yeah, I crazy, mean, when we bigger than when ever. When we interviewed the producers of um, Despacito, mm -hmm. mm. they were talking about how reggaeton fit in their lives and, and the way they incorporate into things and how much more muscular and popular it became. Yeah. And, and, and in defining reggaeton, now do me a favor, because I don't know if we ever asked this on the show, define trap music. Okay, trap music would be, it's a certain style of uh, rhythms on like hi-hat mm -hmm. and, and drum exactly. sounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how does the hi-hat go? The, the hi-hats are, they're, you know, 16th, mm. 32nd, mm -hmm. triplet notes. Mm. Mm. Got yeah. it, got it. Very good. And, Very and good. one sentence can, can sum up trap. 75 beats a minute. <laughs> 75 beats a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That's, yeah. What was it? Gonna, oh, yeah. Speaking of Despacito, uh, so we won the Grammys for Los Duo Dos, right? Mm -hmm. It was Juan Gabriel. On the first one, I think we had uh, Luis Fonsi on. on oh, was that right? Juan Gabriel and Luis Fonsi on one, I'm pretty He's sure. He's had a good year. <laughs> yeah. He's been doing well. been doing okay. Yeah, hell yeah. The, um, Rest well, in peace, Juan Gabriel. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Going back to the internet for a second, we were, again, we were talking before the show. Yeah. Um, because I think everybody, you know, we talk about a lot internally with our show. Yeah. Um, whether you like it or not, you have to be conscious of your brand because sure. you're out there. So you recently switched to, uh, from well, utilizing your given name to Diego, right? Yeah, yeah, Correct? using a producer Can name. Well, I just wanted to, to have a name for for my production. Mm -hmm. I never really thought about it, you know, cause I'm, oh, it was, um, you know, I'm so focused on like the technical, the technicalities and, and making music. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I was inspired, you know, all my favorite producers and stuff, they have producer names. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, a more efficient way to brand yourself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like have a catchy name and as opposed to having a first and last name. Like uh, some, you could use your name, you know, <laughs> like, my, like Puya. Uh, my buddy Puya, he just goes by Puya, mm -hmm. and his name is Kevin Puya. Mm -hmm. So, and he's a rapper. Mm -hmm. so, um, oh, there's ton of that in the country world. Busby, whose name is really Mike Busby, goes by Busby. I remember when it was Derek Ali, and he changed it to Mix Mix Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. it's prevalent, and it and it and it works. Yeah. Long as you're successful. No, oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. changing your name and having no success, you just kind of look silly. But that's, yeah. that's another that's right? another story. And then there's Pharrell. And then there's, <laughs> uh, but oh yeah, so the producer name, uh, so I was looking for a producer name for so long, right? And it's like, I was on tour in Europe with a band called Born of Osiris and my buddy, my buddy David one night, just, he was just like all drunk. He's like, yo, I got a producer name for you, Diego. I'm like, oh, I like it. It sticks. You know, mm -hmm. I texted so a couple friends like. I just smoked some of that. That shit was good. Yeah, no, shit was good, right? Yeah. If you have a daughter, you can call her Jaeger. Yeah. 
Jaeger. I'm dead. <laughs> Jaeger, my Jaeger, Jaeger. Jaeger. Uh, okay. Because you're such you cross genres. You work in a bunch of different things. For sure. Is the recording process or the mental process different depending on who you're working with? Totally. Yeah. One hundred percent. I think you're working with a Latin artist. What would that be as opposed to somebody in the hip hop space? Um, Latin would be very easygoing. Um, More and not and not and not to like overthink it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I'd say in metal, simpler. it's yeah, very simpler, just easygoing. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a pop. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it is pop. You know, mm -hmm. it's like Latin pop. Trap is probably a little bit more, um, I don't know, I guess like bass heavy. Uh, let's see, for a rapper, I would, it's, it's just, it depends on the artist too and their personality. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to make music like according to their personality. Like um, with metal, I would say it's definitely more, um, there, it's more thinking and more intricate. Like you have all these crazy patterns, mm. and also recording metal. Like you have to, like let's say you write a groove, right? Mm -hmm. Like all these patterns, like the ones you're talking about. Like you got to practice them and memorize them, mm -hmm. or either that or read the MIDI notes mm -hmm. for for mm -hmm. what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And then with trap, it's kind of like, it's like you you record something and then you have it and you loop it, and it's more of like you can spend more time focusing on being creative, as opposed to having to deal with like the physical strain of like mm -hmm. nailing the part and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So. Mm -hmm. Because on the metal um, side, are you dealing probably more band-oriented things than sure. other stuff? So you're doing live tracking in certain things guys actually oh, play? Oh, real, real guitars, real bass, mm -hmm. real vocals. I use a lot of MIDI drums because mm -hmm. it helps because nowadays, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. have like Get Good Drums, shout out um, Adam from Periphery. Um, and these drum, these drum uh, plugins are so great. Mm -hmm. The up-and-coming metal stuff that you like currently, who are you listening to? Ooh. Um, dang, all right, our tour manager just picked up a band, and I forgot their name. It's like a thousand below or something, but they're really cool. Mm -hmm. um, we're about to do a tour with Crown the Empire, a Euro tour, and, and they're great guys, mm -hmm. great band. And then uh, there's another band from Japan, and I actually went to Japan with my buddy Gabe, mm -hmm. uh, and I ended up running into some friends that we had taken on tours, um, uh, Crossfaith. Uh, which are from Japan and good guys, and then, ooh, I'm trying to, it's slipping my mind right mm -hmm, now, but mm -hmm. um, those are those two bands are definitely great. And what the camera can't see is, yeah. do you authenticate more when you do metal by having a gold earring or not? Because only I can <laughs> see that on this side. Because <laughs> there's a gold earring over of here. Course, this of course, this is the secret. Oh, God. This oh, no, you the... can see it on the other side. There's two. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, I, I got thought it was two. on both sides. All, All right, right, cool. Now, the other thing that's authenticated is whether you can handle batter's box. Now, are you good for that? I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Um, then let's let's, let's tee that thing up and see, uh, see what you got. Here we go. Okay. In that you're a metal guy, piano. Piano? Mm -hmm. uh, P-I-E-N-O. I know you've seen them. I'd say like a Yamaha. Bass. Ooh. Ibanez. I play Ibanez. Got to got to okay. stick with Ibanez. Uh, lead vocals. Uh, C800G. Ooh. 808s. Lex Luger sample pack or on Big Head sample pack. Ooh. Shout out Big Head. Stereo bus. Ooh, uh, Pro L2. Snare. CLA 76. Kick. Hmm. Ass. No. <laughs> Ass. Uh, EQ. Pro Tools EQ Band 7. Never underestimate that EQ is the best EQ. <laughs> Reverb. Ooh, Valhalla Plate. Strings. Dverb. I'd use that. Oh, I guess it's a reverb. Uh, let's. No, that's Pro L. Pro EQ 7. Okay, and and the cheapest piece of gear you used either in a mix or an instrument you recorded. Cheapest piece of gear on a record that did okay. Um. Oh, for the volume stuff, we'll record a lot of notes like on the iPhone, right? So I remember I had this shitty like acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. and I recorded some notes. I mean, some some licks, and we ended up using on the final recording. Oh, it's like cool. there's actually it's a song called On Her Mind. Uh -huh. With Puy on it, there's like a uh, there's a an acoustic break right before the last chorus, and that acoustic break was recorded on an iPhone <laughs> with like a piece of shit like acoustic guitar, probably a little bit out of tune, and it just sounds amazing. 
<laughs> Love it. Pretty good. He did great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> good stuff. Thank you. Uh, and actually, before Dave takes us home, do you yeah. do you find yourself using strings in your metal work? At yeah, all? you 100%, do. Hundred percent. A lot. Sure. Uh, not a lot, but mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a really cool. It's a beautiful tool. I think strings are uh, it's mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful sounding instruments. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, for sure. There's there, uh, there's like eight thousand trillion million subgenres with subgenres with subgenres in metal. Yeah. Um, when you said you use strings, you, you have a you have a pop side to your metal. Which genres does that fit in? The pop? No, the whole thing, the whole package. Like the metal? I'd say I would just like call volumes, us. Volumes? What genre would you say? I would call us alternative. Hard rock, Alter alternative rock. You can call us alternative rock. You know oh, what okay. I mean? Uh, when we, when I first started, when I was fifteen, I started the band. I used to call it groove metal. You know? Yeah. Well, that's because like, was listening to it. I yeah. really, for real, on, on MySpace, we put it group. We made our groove metal. You know? Mm. So, um, but now I'd call it alternative rock. You know, mm. it's just a, a little bit on the heavier side. Well, a couple things. One is um, thanks for the support of the show. Of course, um, thanks. We don't have a show me. unless you know we have guys like yourself who f who follow us, and hopefully it serves a purpose. It's an honor, uh, uh, and it's an honor to have you. Um, also, keep bending those genres and crossing over and messing it up. It's what I live for. Yeah, break 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 the barriers because uh, that's what makes it interesting and, and what makes it good. Um, and Thank then, you, um, you know, one of the things when we do our live events that we don't necessarily have as much as we should are guys from the space that you inhabit to come out and speak to kids and do it and so, so forth. So if that's ever of interest to you, we, we go out, as you can heard from the top of the show, we go out and talk to lots of different people. For sure. um, and it's good for guys who may want to emulate what you're doing to hear from somebody who's actually doing it. You know what I mean? And particularly not seeing some long haired guy who's 56 years old, somebody who's currently doing their thing. You For know sure. What I mean? So yeah, I'd love to. So let us know if it's of any, any interest to you. Cool? 100%. All right, Dave, take us home. I was just sitting here thinking um, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, uh, our profession um, seemed to benefit by specialization. So you would, you would find one little niche, um, I can't say that word, niche. Niche genre, and and you'd mind that, and then and then you could grow out from that and, and do other things. And it seems sitting here listening to Yego uh, today, it feels like like that system is dead. It feels like now you need to kind of start with a with a wider palette and, and a and a bigger um, understanding of, of various genres. And, and put as much of that as you can into your work. And, 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 and I think it's refreshing that we're doing that more now. I really like that more than we did the way we did it in the 70s and 80s. Check it Thank out. Think about it. Something to think about. Bye-bye.